Just a little bit. you guys and invite you guys into our space we're gonna make a short video talking about living from the heart um <laughs> peace love and light close to god peace and love yes mm -hmm. so we're gonna make a, a short video just building on the on the heart and living in the heart um and we didn't structure anything so we kind of just gonna be moving just uh intuitively okay oh yes Infinity Red, I Lisa, I play piano, keyboard, I feel with my hands. That's yeah. dope. Mm -hmm. All right. So, the heart. It's like, where do you begin with that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm going to go ahead. Okay. I'm going to finish. We'll do one later. Okay. Cool. All right. Let's go. Okay. So... Like I said, I don't really even know where I'm about to start, but um, yeah, the heart, there there can't be any type of spiritual progression unless you begin in the heart or situate yourself in the heart. And so the reason why this is important is because in our society now, it's such an overemphasis on uh, left brain logic and the building of the intellect. And basically what that's done is it's pushed the heart far behind. So the mind has the lead essentially in our culture and the heart gets pushed behind and basically not validated for its own existence. And so it's very important to know that as a spiritual aspirant or a truth seeker, that all real development and contact with higher levels and higher levels of the self happen essentially through the heart because the heart is essentially the divining rod of your soul, you know? And it has so much more faculties and powers in it than just feeling emotions. In fact, uh, emotions, you know, if filtered through the heart correctly, are the precursors to all your intuition. You know what I'm saying? So when people say, oh, they in their emotions, they not, you know what I'm saying? And but really, really for fellas, you know what I'm saying? Just in terms of male consciousness, because that's how we interact. We we don't like to go into our feelings or we just make fun of people say, damn, you and your feelings. But the real truth of the matter is, is that your feelings are there to be validated and your emotions are there to be validated. And so the thing is, is that we have to sift, sift through those emotions because they're showing us which way we can go because reality has so many different possibilities. But the emotions are literally the precursors to intuition. So it's just like how they say um, uh, mel uh, ser melanin or serotonin is a precursor to, uh, oh, my bad, am I getting that wrong? What are you trying to say? I'm basically trying to talk about, uh, just link that to the production of uh, serotonin and melatonin in the body. So like how they say uh, tryptophan, you need tryptophan as a precursor to melatonin body or serotonin in the body what i'm saying is that emotions are actually the precursor to developing the state of intuition that all human beings have access to and it becomes very important to work out the heart because the heart can perceive the past the present and the future you know what i'm saying the heart can pre predict uh galactic events solar events it could predict events that's happening with your children happening with your family so and these are all powers that grow from the heart once you constantly give it work. You know what I'm saying? And what I mean by giving the heart work is that every situation or every choice that you have in life, you should weigh it against your heart. So as soon as you speak, you're going to have a feeling that comes from you. And you, it'll let you know if your words are true, if you fabricated something, if you lied, and if they're less than true. 
You know what I'm saying? And people pick up on this. This is why reason, just reason and logic in our community, especially in the black community, it doesn't do shit for people. So that's why it's, it's all of these uh, guys that's even like building and debating and stuff like that, which serves its purpose. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, I guess I'll just talk about the negative aspect of it. It's a lot of people in our community that debate and are just uh, knowledge hoarders. You know what I'm saying? But they're not actually living or making that teaching a part of their life. It's not it's not transforming their life on the inside out. So you got a lot of uh, dudes, a lot of niggas that basically debate and in the name of development of their consciousness, but it's not doing shit because reason and logic does not unify people. You know what I'm saying? What unifies people is love, you know? And I'm not just trying to be on some love and light, lovey-dovey type shit. Like mm -hmm. this is actual fact. You get moved by feelings. You know what I'm saying? Somebody can tell you all the information or all the facts and the reasons in the world, but that shit don't do nothing to you. It only clicks when your grandmother might die. So you have to take action because that shit hits your heart. You know what I'm saying? It only makes sense when your children are in danger. So then you, you're not even thinking. You don't got time to think. You moving straight from the heart. You know what I'm saying? That superhuman strength that comes, you know, if your children are ever in danger and stuff like that. The even being in sports, when you tap into like sports psychology, that's called the flow state. When everything is just one and you just don't go mode. You're not thinking. You raised above the level of thought. You penetrated above the level of thought. You know what I'm saying? Thought is good because it helps you take a fragmented picture of reality. But once again, reality is a unified whole, right? So we can't approach reality through thinking. You know what I'm saying? That's why this popular or dominant culture in the West does not cater to our innate spiritual abilities because it's the overemphasis of the intellect. You know what I'm saying? But with the heart, the heart is the future. It's a in the what do they say? We're in the Kali Yuga in terms of um the, the cosmic age that we're in, in terms of enlightenment on the planet and consciousness developing. They say that we're in the Kali Yuga, according to the Sanskrit or according to Indian thought, right? But in the Kali Yuga, man and woman are going to be able to comprehend the finer nature of electricity. So says uh, Sri Yukteswar in his book, The Holy Science. He talks about how you develop, basically you develop your consciousness in different cosmic cycles and stages. There's a flowering of consciousness on the planet and you begin to know more about the nature of reality, more about the nature of electricity. You know what I'm saying? So I'm basically saying that the brain is the past. The brain is the past and the heart is the future, right? So I'm not saying forget about the brain, but I'm saying that we have way too much emphasis on the brain. You know what I'm saying? Way too much emphasis on logic and reason. Now, what happens is, is when you live from the heart, you just move intuitively and that gets slowed down until it becomes logic or it becomes reason because the heart vibrates higher. You know what I'm saying? Even scientifically, they'll show you experiments. Uh, I think it's like the Heart Institute or Heart Math Institute or something like that. They no longer think that the brain is the, the number one uh, electrical powerhouse of the body. They saw that the heart actually generates an electromagnetic field that's, what, uh, 10, 15 times stronger than the brain. You know what I'm saying? And so all this has to do with the transformation of you into a spiritual being because the more that you live in the heart and abide in the heart which we're going to talk about how to live in the heart how to abide in the heart the more that you do that the more that you are going to raise dormant brain cells and resurrect them from the dead and activate yourself on many different levels mm -hmm. now etherically speaking somebody who is a clairvoyant or a seer it was perceived even in ancient times that the etheric heart had 12 different petals around Right. So I'm saying etherically, a clairvoyant, somebody who can see into the etheric body of a person. You know, some of y'all can see like little apparitions or ghosts and little shit every now and then. You know what I'm saying? It might sound crazy to some people, obviously, but my tribe know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So etherically, the clairvoyant perception of the heart was to have uh, 12 different petals around it. And those 12 different petals represented different virtues that you need to have in order to ascend to higher planes. Now, the reason for this is because once you establish those virtues in your life, those become, as we said last week, communication lines between higher worlds and higher beings. So, for instance, the, the characteristics of truthfulness or compassion, there is a deity or energy that's linked to compassion that it was the master of. 
So in order for you to obtain that lock and key mechanism to tap into that new frequency, you have to be compassionate from your heart. You know what I'm saying? And then you draw on the powers from that level of compassion. But um, yeah, I think the main thing with that is that the the brain does not work as all one, right? They say, how many brains we got, y'all? They say we got, uh, what, four brains? Don't give me the line, but they say, mm -hmm. all right, so we got the reptilian brain, right? Which is basically one of your most primitive brains. So this is where evil comes from. Not necessarily evil in a religious sense, but it's evil because this is where your animalistic nature comes from, the reptilian brain, i.e. the brain stem, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the ancients found that... Uh -huh. the, the ancients found that if you acted from your animal sensors, which is the brainstem, that's basically the biggest brain in the reptile kingdom, that you would be more uh, based on instinct and based on survival and have a cold-blooded nature because everything is about preservation of yourself. Fuck other people because it's about preservation from yourself. Now, there are people who reside wholly within that brainstem. You know what I'm saying? They reside wholly within that reptile, within that reptilian brain. And the ancients saw that as a set, right? And so <clears throat> they identified that with not necessarily evil in the sense that we think it, but they identified that with evil because they know that we had a higher nature, okay? So the next brain would be the, the, the limbic system. And so that's what you find when you get to um, the, all your mammals and the higher mammals, the limbic system. So in there you have the emotional and feeling uh, aspect and faculties that develop as you have, you know, relationships with other other people or other species and the third brain is the neocortex and that's which separates us from uh the animal kingdom you know what i'm saying they don't have the neocortex they don't have the higher thought or the ability to tap into the higher mind which basically means to be able to see yourself from outside of yourself to see yourself from outside of yourself so that you can make modifications to your behavior and to your nature right but we also have a, a stomach in the gut you know what I'm saying? And that basically just deals with taking okay. uh huh. I'm saying stomach in the gut. A stomach in the gut. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the enteric nervous system. So the brain the brain the brain inside your stomach. Now they say the brain inside your stomach produces all of the same neurotransmitters as as your brain that's on in your uh cranium. You know what I'm saying? Actually I think ninety five percent of neurotransmitters actually are secreted within the gut. You know what I'm saying? So the reason for me saying this is that you can unify and uh, integrate all of these different brains under the rule of your heart once you tap into the heart. But I'm going to let Boo get on get on right quick because I feel like I've just been on a little, you was a little, a little rant. You got, you got this. I know, but I was just saying. <laughs> you was challenging. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you wanted to add in uh, about how to, walk, how to move through the heart, mm -hmm. how to live through the heart. So I seen some people uh, making some mentions. Let's go through that first, so we don't we don't forget about y'all. We appreciate y'all. Yeah. Um. Now you talking about hey sis, Verona, come through. Me. <laughs> um. And that's why it's so important to hear the broken hearts. How are they feeling is how they are dealing. Mm -hmm. That is so true. And I feel like that is really where we begin to tap into our consciousness. We can't really live through our heart until we have addressed the matters of the heart. Exactly. You know, addressing any type of pain that we've been inflicted upon through our childhood, through our teenage years, and our adult life. Mm -hmm. um, and that could be the most difficult thing to deal with because when we're talking about the heart let's just talk about like in buddhism and hinduism when we're talking about the chakras mm -hmm. i look at you because it's like i feel like i'm talking to somebody <laughs> <laughs> but when we're talking about the heart chakra the heart chakra is seen to be spinning too when it's spinning too fast you become a very over manipulated person mm -hmm. you could become controlling you become possessive and obsessive with things you put conditions on your love if you don't do this mm -hmm. then i'm not gonna love you right. if you don't give me this then i'm not gonna love you you know you start to to take control of everything you become greedy 
when your heart chakra is spinning too fast. So when we look at the state of where a heart chakra is, it can tell us how much healing or how much work or how much more balancing we need to do. Or if we are act actively operating through heart chakra um, consciousness, which right. is when we know it's when it's balanced. When it's moving too slow, it's sluggish, then you might be a person that is actively um, pe people pleasing. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't stand up for yourself. You're not taking any value in who you are and what you came to bring into this earth. You are instead focusing on being validated by other people on mm -hmm. a constant, consistent basis. You know, you look at yourself as unworthy of love, un undeserving of love. You right. feel pity, you know. Um, you may even victimize yourself. You know, exactly. like see yourself constantly as a victim. Well, this happened to me because I'm this, that, and the third. Or I, why, why am I this way? Or why does this thing happen to me? Why is my life this way? When you start separating yourself from the whole and not looking at your lessons and your experiences as something that's going to propel you forward in your consciousness, then you, your, your heart stopper starts to slow down, you know? True. And then on the balance side of things, when you are in equilibrium with your heart consciousness, then you start to be in a space where you see everything as a unifying whole. Because right. the heart chakra is the bridge, right. you know, it's the bridge to the higher world. So it's right here in that center space. Oh, let me let me tap in on yeah. that. Y'all know, do y'all know that in the Tibetan system, right? In the Tibetan Buddhist system, that the chakra system is completely different than in the Indian system. So where you have in the Indian system, you got the seven different uh, chakras going up your body. Within the Tibetan system, they picture this chakra as the base level of consciousness associated with the earth, the brain, right? And so this, the throat chakra actually gets into a deeper level. So theirs is basically inverse. And they have a system based off of four, five, six, and one for seven, too. But this is in the Tibetan chakra system. But when you get to the heart, that's the deep, that's well, that's one of the deepest chakras in all existence because that basically means that you're tapped into the heart of nature and the heart of the sun and basically you're connected with every life essence that's in your vicinity but i thought that that was very very uh important because you know when we talk about the chakra systems people tend to fix their understanding and think that it's a solidified reality this is not the case this is why you have different native american tribes or even in africa you have different spiritual systems that incorporate different different principles that build a different energetic system so it's not set in stone you know what i'm saying that's why a lot of y'all have y'all own y'all literally got your own spirituality you know what i'm saying and you got all you got your systems and procedures that literally allow you to tap into that god level but i just thought it was important that because this the heart chakra is the fourth chakra to just make mention of the chakra in another system which is in the tibetan system now the deeper you go into the body is the deeper you go into the actual spiritual fabric of reality through the heart. Go ahead, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I was talking about it being the bridge to the higher world. And, you know, we, we always make mention about, you know, the anagram for earth mm -hmm. is heart, you mm -hmm. know, and on this, in this dimension, this is why we see those two extremes of there being a victim and there being an abuser, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or in the, there being an oppressor or the, and there being a slave or there being somebody in control and there being a robot because right. those are that's what creates the, the duality of this dimension. Mm -hmm. And for us to be able to elevate, we have to polarize our lens mm -hmm. in seeing the, the dimension as unified whole, you know, so and create that balance in between of looking at one another as this unified whole, yeah. as an interdependent universe, as opposed to being independent and codependent. Yeah. You know, we have when we're thinking about the Western society, it's so independently driven. I, well, I shouldn't even say Western society because I really don't like that because everybody in the West doesn't operate in that frequency. Yeah, that's true. So under under this umbrella that we live here in the United States of America, it's a lot of independent way of living. Mm -hmm. Crabs in the barrel, everybody's trying yeah. to get themselves out and not think about like, how can we all get ourselves out of this barrel together? Right. You know what I'm right. saying? How can we be like ants? working together, holding on as a link to get to propel ourselves forward, you know? Yeah. Um, so when we look at Earth, Earth is constantly telling us by all the green that we're surrounded by how important the heart is, mm -hmm. how important love is. And when we think about a tree, a tree um, essentially is providing on a consistent basis mm -hmm. for a plethora of kingdoms 
all day long. Right. And so when we're trying to tap into our heart consciousness, it's tapping into service. Mm -hmm. That's the trueness of it all. Mm -hmm. Tapping into giving yourself, giving your gifts, your talents, your um, whatever you're channeling into and giving it out to whomever you come in contact, in, in, in contact with mm -hmm. to help each other to elevate, to help each other to bring up the vibratory uh, frequency of the planet. Exactly. You know, so when we try to work, when when we are living through our heart, we are living through service. Exactly. We are living through compassion and empathy and kindness. We stop moving away from trying to use what we gain, the knowledge that we gain as a, a reason to control others mm -hmm. and using what we gain as a reason to control our lower natures, mm -hmm. you know, and unifying the lower natures that's within us, you know, and bringing balance to that. And when we're able to, to, to come to that point, then we create what's a, a purity inside of our soul. Yeah. You know, we create um, a joy that cannot be wavered, no matter what the circumstances might be. Exactly. You know, when people are living through fear, they start to manipulate. When yeah. people are feeling through, are living through a lot of guilt mm -hmm. and grief, they start to try to control whatever they can to not lose things, exactly. you know, because they become so attached, you know, and the heart chakra is that beginning stage of learning how to create connections as opposed to attachments. Exactly. And so it's a uh -huh. lot of, <laughs> it's a lot of things that we have to shed in order to tap into what's real, yeah. you know, and that, that's why the heart chakra is that bridge because once we start to get to the higher worlds, it's a lot of different things that you can no longer live through. Mm -hmm you know, in order to, to, to elevate. Exactly. And so it being the center is so important. And when we look at earth, you know, we look at the trees that are right here that are surrounding us and we look above the trees, we see blue, which goes into that throat chakra. So mm -hmm. even earth mm -hmm. on a daily is showing us that right here in the center of it all, where we are living, where we are operating at, it has everything to do with the heart. Right. You know, and the state of the world shows us the state of human consciousness mm -hmm. where the human conscious heart chakra is vibrating to. Right. You know, if, if you are surrounded in a space that is filled with a lot of, you know, killing and abuse and uh, mind manipulation, it shows you what that the chakra is spinning too fast as yeah. a human kingdom. So that's why we have to come together. Mm -hmm. Like you were saying before, instead of being so separate, instead of being so debate, uh, debating all the time and trying to use logic and reason as a as a means to be valid, validate, true, validate truth, exactly, and and, and be the leader. Yeah, that's that's. And I remember what you was about to say, but I was gonna say that's another thing, y'all. Like when people we we try to use the reason and the logic to validate truth and make that be like the substance of our life you know what i'm saying but i can't tell you how many times that i may have read something and then i came to queen and she's like oh i kind of already knew that intuitively based off of how i feel you know what i'm saying so i say that to say is that once again the heart trumps all of that shit. you know what i'm saying and so if you're doing anything or around people that are only living for themselves obviously they're not heart centered now the joy and the beauty that comes from living in the heart is that you make yourself a higher law and what i mean by that is when you take your frame of mind from just one person with inside of the human kingdom and you begin to see yourself as life penetrating human clothes or 3d matter you actually have access to all of the higher powers and superpowers and knowledge of the universe and the reason be is because that your fire burns brighter because it doesn't burn for yourself. So okay. if you have a fire that's burning for your whole race, your whole people, and it's actually burning, it's vibrating past just the human family into other kingdoms as well, you are employed spiritually in the spiritual world. You are fit and qualified for service in the spiritual world. You know what I'm saying? And so that, I guess that's another thing, but it's very important to know that just on a cosmic scale, living in the heart does not mean just having, uh, you know, just beautiful human interactions. It's so much more. It actually extends outside of the human kingdom. How do you interact with all of creation tells your relationship to the creator, which mm -hmm. is basically inside of you as your higher self. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Any bit, any aspect of your uh, relationship to creation shows you exactly where you're at you know you might be a loving person 
but um, when it comes to people, or loving in a relative sense, but when it comes to, let's say, animals, <clears throat> you go out and shoot animals on a range for fun. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's a lot going on there because it's inner conflict. Mm-hmm. And you never want to have inner conflict because over time, what that's going to do is it's going to create a split personality and it's going to create a vehicle where basically where more illusion, more ignorance can reign supreme. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But living from the heart is essentially saying that you are one with all of creation and you recognize the life principle in all of creation and it's basically equality equality is to want for your, to want for others what you want for self you know what i'm saying it's the exact uh, opposite of jealousness you know what i'm saying you become jealous of people because you're not connected to them now answer this question could you ever be jealous of your mother i'm gonna say yes yeah, some people could some people could say that but i would i would say I, maybe that wasn't a good example to use because I think it is some jealousy. But I'm basically <laughs> saying that when you feel truly connected to somebody, you're never jealous of them. You you will never be jealous of anybody when you're connected to them. Yeah. I'm never jealous of my brothers. I mean, in, in the past, obviously, like we've had certain emotions come up, but that's not something that I've had to work with like big time, other things, yeah. But when you're connected to somebody, there's no room for things like jealousy because yeah. if she's eating, I'm eating. If she's getting an upgrade, I'm getting an upgrade. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's a matter of just feeling that connectivity with people. And like Queen was saying, being able to connect to the soul rather than the lower personality. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, So one of the ways that we develop the powers of the heart on a practical level, on a very practical level, because the soul, the soul is intimately connected to the heart is to give. When you do selfless service and give of yourself, once again, you become a higher law. You know what I'm saying? Because this is what it is, y'all. Nature is not preferential. She will raise you up just to the bare minimum and leave the rest of your development leave the rest of your development for you to 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 transcend you know what i'm saying so the reason why service is so beautiful is because it atrophies the lower self it atrophies that faculty that sees itself as a separative self as a separative entity so once again the more you engage in selfless service is the more that you atrophy the lower self because the lower self feeds and is predicated off of seeing itself as a separate existence but a person who is engaged in selfless service and giving is tied to unity consciousness unity consciousness how could they not be because they take into account that which is around them the space that's around them they become a custodian of the space they become a custodian or a steward of earth you know what i'm saying and i just wanted to add like a lot of times you'll see people talking about you know, you are my reflection. And that taps into that whole, um, instead of mindset, heart set, <laughs> that you see yourself through other people. And if you really took a took time to look at who you are, all your strengths and all your weaknesses, you'll stop judging people. That's another thing I forgot to mention. When your heart chakra is in balance, you become overly critical. Overly, overly judgmental of others and of yourself as well. And in order to balance that, you have to start seeing who you are fully and accepting who you are and working on refining who you are. And then when you look at other people, because you learn to develop compassion for yourself, you develop compassion for others. And That doesn't mean that you end up staying in relationships or in environments or around people that are constantly bringing harm to you, but that you see that person as being somebody who is harmed, who has been harmed and hasn't tapped into the healing, Mm. hasn't tapped into forgiveness, hasn't been able to control their urges to hurt based off of being hurt. So you, instead of moving away with resentment and bitterness, the things that kill you slowly, you move away with love and you send them love and you send them high high vibratory um, energy to help lift them up. So maybe not in this lifetime, but in the next lifetime when their soul comes back again, 
they're able to to utilize that energy that you sent them to make themselves a more refined person. So yes, there's a lot of people out here that might be doing evil things, but if you look at evil, it's anagram is a veil. So all that's have really all that really they're operating is with a veil, an illusion, a lens that's covering their eyes from truly seeing things from a unified perspective. And so instead of just looking at them as demons, even though there is demonic energy, you know, and there are demonic energies that feed off of lower um, thoughts and lower actions and hurt people who are um, constantly recycling back in pain and suffering. There are those things. We don't want to just throw the whole person away. You know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> just a pattern coming through that person. <laughs> right. That they've been locked into. I, don't, I wish there's just, there was this, um, what was it called? At this uh, Marvel show called Cloak and Dagger, and in the episode there was a guy who got who was basically caught in some type of explosion for some type of I don't even know some type of mat uh, material that changed him for years, and basically he was stuck in a cycle, and over and over inside his head he was repeating the trauma of the explosion happening, and that's what happens to people they become trapped in, in a cycle of trauma mm. and so when they live their life that's how they are, uh, are acting through that trauma so they hurt people they try to control people they try to manipulate people they judge people they criticize people they hit people you know they say nasty things to people because inside of their mind see they're trapped in the mind they're not living through the heart Inside their mind, they're recycling back trauma that they've experienced, whether it was this lifetime or before or through their generation. Because until we start getting into DNA activation where we're cleansing our DNA, we're still carrying on a lot of that generational trauma as well. Mm -hmm. Which is why, like, when they started talking about the whole, we're not going to talk about his name, docuseries, and they're bringing up all of these sexual abuse allegations and stuff like that. The biggest thing that came from that was that there were so many people that knew about it that did nothing about it. It was a silence. And so when we think about, you know, in the black community, the being enslaved here on this land, there were times when there was an abuser that was raping and molesting and beating on men, women, and children, and they could do nothing about it. They could say nothing about it. They had to suffer in that silence. And so when we look at ourselves, you know, years down the line, um, generations down the line, we still manifest that silence until we become aware that that silence is somewhere within our DNA and we have to change it, we have to clear it. And that's how we'd be able to start to, to move through our heart consciousness because we become aware of all the, the darker aspects of ourselves and the lighter aspects of ourselves. And instead of, you know, blaming people and judging people, we just refine us. And while we're finding us, we change the environment that we're around. We change the circumstances that we find ourselves in. And we start to give more of our talents and our gifts. And we start mm -hmm. to give more service. And we start to give more love. And the only thing that's going to you know, change um, lower vibratory frequencies is higher vibratory frequency. Because that's just how energy works. Right. Energy is going to match whatever is the mm -hmm. most dominating energy that is in the room. So if your energy is authentically um, of, of love and compassion, that's what the, the lower energies are going to um, try to match and come to. And so when, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll move, expanding. Please expand on moving away with love. It's, it's a, okay. It's not an easy thing to do. Um, but it is something that I've had to work on for sure. And some I could just tell you some of the things that I've done. Uh, yes, that's true. Mama. Yes, darling. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So Mama. yes. I'm I, I'm gonna be a little distracted now. Yes, you my cutie. <laughs> um, so yeah, how do you move away with love? It and initially it is difficult because what is, what is like what do you mean 
Cause some they're asking there is questions here. Somebody said, like, "Please expand on moving away with love." Um. um okay. Okay. I'm gonna uh, answer this, and then I'm gonna go do my mommy duties, cause he's he wants to nurse. <laughs> um. But I'll we'll we'll come back again actually too just to keep expanding on this because I can go all day, y'all. Both of us can. You see how much we be talking. <laughs> but okay, so moving with love, it it really has to begin with you going through your trauma. This is what I did that what worked for me. I allowed myself to experience it. I experienced trauma. I don't know somebody mentioned sexual abuse when I was a child. And I literally had to go back in time, which is like a capitulation, and put myself in that moment in time. Because when we are in a state of trauma, our brain shuts down to help us survive whatever is happening. And on a soul level, we become fragmented. And so our pieces of our energy get locked in that space and time. And when as when it when it uh and moving forward in the days and the weeks, months and years later, we feel like a part of us is still missing because literally a part of you was fragmented into that space and time. It got left back in that space and time. So we do some work where we go back in time and start to reclaim that energy back to put it, our pieces of ourselves that have been broken back together, then we are able to start to make ourselves feel whole again and start to feel healed again. And when I looked at my abuser, I know that he was also hurt and that he was also just living out all that he already knew. Now, that doesn't mean that I need to be around that person ever again. It doesn't make what that person did right. But I see that he, because he was hurt, he hurt me and other people. And so if I live my life through that pain and cycle over that suffering over and over and over again, what I will do is hurt somebody else. And being in relationships with men, I have been in a space where I was like, you know, man ain't nothing because this and that happened to me. Or I'm not trusting of you because this and that happened to me. So even though I'm not, you know, placing my hands with somebody or I'm not sexually abusing anybody, I'm hurting people by trying to make them pay for what somebody else did. And so once I recognized that within myself and realized that I had to go back and we claim who I truly was to be love that I am, um, that's when changes started to happen. So instead of looking at my abuser like, I blame you for all of the things that you've done to me. I blame you for how I feel. I took control about for how I feel. I regained my power for how I feel because it's my life. And if I don't do that, nobody will do it. And they will always have that power over you. So instead I said, I forgive you. And it wasn't something I said to their face. It was something I did through dreams. It was something I said out loud. It was something I did in meditation, you know, and doing like fire and water rituals. Um, I forgive you and I see you. I see that you are hurting and I send you love. And that takes, it takes a lot of strength to do that. I'm not going to lie, but it, 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 some powerful things started happening once I started to do that. So moving away from love is to first give yourself love, the love that you need, and regain your power back so that you can be able to be in a healing space to say that I forgive you. Because you can't inauthentically forgive somebody. Forgiveness comes after you've healed. It comes naturally. It doesn't come from you just saying it. It comes from like a deep instilled feeling that you have like i no longer feel resentment and bitterness because they no longer have control over me anymore um <laughs> yes yeah, so let's tap into that heart <laughs> exactly you have to retain your own power it's it's the realest it's the realest i hope that answers your question um, if it doesn't, let me know if you got any more questions, put it down. Um, you got something else you want to add to that? No. Um, but uh, Oh, well, I thank you for tuning in. I appreciate that reflection. <laughs> mm -hmm.
Wish you all peace, Ron. Peace, brother. Wait, yeah, so once we start as um, uh, you know, addressing the things that keep our hearts blocked and full of debris and toxins, then we can start to be inauthentically ourselves and moving through love. You got a question? Go ahead. Oh good. I'm I'm grateful for for love. Hope I said that right. <laughs> What's your question, Javon? Did we touch on everything we want to talk about? Um, you know, when I die, right? I dive deep into the emotions. In yes, darling. So we talked about how to live from the heart. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just, you want to add on to that? How to live? Oh, well, you did. I did. Okay, I'll be back yeah. if you guys are still here. I'm gonna go nurse. Okay. Yeah. So y'all don't see <laughs> see my booze uh, goodies and shit. <laughs> <That's so crazy. laughs> go ahead. Talk, okay. Damn, I feel like you done said everything. <laughs> everything there is to say. Okay. All right. Uh, Infinity Red said, how do you open up your heart chakra more? Um, really, I do it in a lot of different ways, but the best way is that... Um, all right, so first let me say this. When I had my children, like, that shit changed my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, it really it really geared my reality and perception like to like unity consciousness because now that i had children i was looking at everybody i come in contact with like or younger people as my children you know what i'm saying so it was like the whole village raises a child mindset times 10 you know what i'm saying so my vision was basically geared towards all right how do i interact with this person on a level where i'm treating them like they're buddha but they got amnesia you know what i'm saying and so uh basically like throughout the day i do like small practices you know what i'm saying so like literally while i'm talking to somebody my exchanges might be on a physical level oh yeah da -da -da -da, i just ate some salad woo -woo -woo, or whatever but like in my mind i'm actually like projecting love and uh just compassion to them you know what i'm saying um but the way that i open up my heart it starts early in the morning like as soon as i wake up i establish a rhythm of my day and the structure of my day but one of the first practices that i do is that i contemplate on principles like eternity eternity uh the transitory nature of human of, of human life impermanence and stuff like that so what it does is that helps me look at things from an infinite and eternal aspect so that i'm better i'm able to engage with people from that type of level you know what i'm saying i'm able to engage with people from that god level because it's like i see our existence and more than just this one lifetime you know what i'm saying and also your love is like water so just the interactions the compliments that you give people the encouragement that you give people um and talking to them about their hopes and their dreams and their goals that taps into the soul you know what i'm saying it's like you're watering their inner gardens for eternity by doing that because they sense that their higher nature is being spoken to and so what that does is that helps open up their heart as well you know what i'm saying so we were just talking about how once you incorporate these virtues into your being, you become aligned. You become more geometric in your nature. And people see that. They sense that. You know what I'm saying? Like, how many of y'all are uh, plant-based or vegan or y'all have a lifestyle that people admire? You know what I'm saying? So when I went, when I used to go to work, right, I, I swear to God, it would be like 20 people at, at, the, at the job, but I only told two people that I'm plant-based. Mm -hmm. So when I come back to work, you know what I'm saying? It'd be like five, six, seven, eight type of people. You got one person that's like, ah, I can't go vegan. I'm like, I ain't even asked you if you, if you wanted to go <laughs> vegan in your life. And then you got the rest of the people, they just randomly come up to you saying, yeah, I'm about to go on a juice fast. I'm about to go on a detox. Yeah, I had the decision to eat some fried food, but I, I wasn't going to do it. You know what I'm saying? I just ate some cooked veggies. So I guess what I'm saying is that when you are dealing with compassion and you're being that example and you're working on yourself, it resonates with people and it opens up your heart chakra because they're going to reflect exactly what you gave to them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I'm not sure if I answered that, um, but I, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, okay, but I will say as far as opening the heart chakra, just laughter. You know what I'm saying? Laughter and really I contemplate on my children and just meditate on them. You know what I'm saying? What they represent. For me, like personally for me, like being there with my children, um, it opens up my heart. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't have a, a mystical technique for that joint. It's just really, you know, just wanting people to see the best for people and creating those conditions for people. You know what I'm saying? So if you know somebody has having a bad day or whatever, like cut the small talk get right to their soul talk right to the high their higher nature you know what i'm saying that's why me and key we don't really do too much small talk because we live from the heart so everything that we talk about with people in our interactions it's going to have to be deep it's going to have to be some shit that shakes your foundations you know what i'm saying so <clears throat> right <laughs> he said facts the same for you with your work situation Mm -hmm. Javon said arguments, how to overcome arguments. Charity, open heart, exactly. Give them the most prized possession. That's the ancient technique. Exactly. That selfless service is mm -hmm. the quickest annihilator of, uh, of karma. You know what I'm saying? Um, of negative karma. But I think that's a good question, though, too, uh, Javon. Javon said arguments, how to overcome them. Mm. What you want to say about that? Um, Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, Javon, I'm gonna answer that, but I still kind of feel the energy behind the heart chakra. So something that we'd like to do is like in the morning time, we'll look at like we'll literally watch like a, a time lapse, uh, time lapse video of flowers blooming, and we just sit in silence. Or sometimes we play music behind it, but for five to seven minutes, all we're doing is watching the time lapse of a flower come from a seed and just growing and blooming and the beautiful thing about that is that every day that we take that in we identify aspects of ourselves with that flower that's blooming and blossoming and it's so beautiful because it's a slow it's slowed down so you're seeing everything occur um in five minutes and you can't tell me that an internal switch or uh, internal shift doesn't take place because you know innately that what you're looking at is you you know what I'm saying? It's yourself. So you watching the tree blossom, you watching the tree bloom, it triggers some being some spiritual DNA in you and some aspects inside of you, your soul, your consciousness is flowering as well as you're watching it. You know what I'm saying? But ways to open up the heart is to look for beauty, search for beauty, orientate your life around all things beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Whoa. Whoa, exactly. Whoa. Right. So uh, <laughs> yeah right. so arguments and how to overcome them yeah we were just talking about that uh yesterday like we may, we may argue at times but it's hard to really call it arguing because like it's not like we're like rah, 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 you know what i'm saying we're not like chopping each other's heads off but i would say for arguments it's necessary to know it's necessary to see yourself it's necessary to see <laughs> He happy because he closed he closed his window. Um all right. Um you wanna start off on that? Yeah, I Thank you for joining us, Rashida. Um, so to answer your question, how to overcome arguments, I think that that really comes with yourself. I always say that when I looked at my past relationships, a lot of the things that we will, I would get into it with somebody else about, and not like fight. Just naturally, I, I don't, I don't like my Piscean two nature is very like I don't like conflict, which is something I had to overcome as well because the something just because something is disagreeable doesn't mean that it's conflict and something you should run away from. But just in conversations with in past relationships, it I, when you don't deal with them. Um, I don't correctly the first time they come back up. That's how lessons work. That's how the universe teaches us. They put us in the same situations over and over and over again until we establish an understanding of the lesson. So before Prima and I got together, I was doing a lot of self um self love work and a lot of self reflection work where I was starting to notice, you know, my weaknesses and started to see my strengths and started to see myself through other people and starting to see other people through me. And so whenever he would bring things up, 
it would be something I would already know. And most of the times we argue about things that we don't want to accept about ourselves mm-hmm. or about other people. And a lot of times people find themselves in relationships with people who are not equally yoked with them. And by equally yoked, it just means like you guys are not vibrating on the same frequency. You guys are not moving down the same path. You guys are not moving towards the same goal. And so there's going to be constant friction, constant friction. And now when you have a healthy relationship, you guys are both going to um, be seeing each other's without the veil Mm -hmm. and so there are going to be things that you're going to want that person to strive towards but it should be something that they innately want to strive towards themselves and not you trying to put something on them that's not authentically them you know but be helping them to to become stronger in who they are by being understanding by being compassionate and once we start to look through those lanes of compassion and empathy then arguments decrease dramatically because you're not fighting it. You're not resisting growing. And the person that you're talking to is not resisting growing as well. They're open to it. They're accepting to it. So you can, we will have times where we, we see that we're resisting and are like, no, no, no. I'm like, you know what? You're right. I do do that. I do need to work on that, you know? And so it, it becomes something that happens more and more where you're just seeing yourself and the other person is seeing themselves but you both have to be vibrating to that otherwise just constant clashing is going to take place <clears throat> and when the constant clashing is happening that lets you know that someone or both of you is not in a space of refinement and growth and development and evolution of the soul you know for our relationship the, the foundation of our relationship is a spiritual relationship, is our spiritual practices. So I feel for us, that's what we vibrate to and resonate to the most. And that's why when we're talking to each other, we're talking to each other's souls. When we're dealing with each other, we're dealing with each other's souls. And we see, okay, we love each other's ego and we love each other's soul. We love each other's angels and we love each other's demons because when you're in a balanced relationship, your angels help their demons and, and vice versa. And so that's how you create this type of equilibrium within the relationship, which decreases those arguments as well. And then you, when you have compassion for yourself, then you have compassion for others. You stop doing things like yelling at them. You stop doing things like saying disrespectful or mean things to them. And that way that reduces a lot of tension that causes people to get into fights and cursing at each other, you know, mm-hmm. because there's no, there's a lack of honor there. Mm-hmm. And when you honor one another and you honor yourself, you treat people like the old saying goes, treat people how you want to be treated. Like it might sound cliche, but it's, it's the realest, mm-hmm. you know, if you treat people unkindly, that's what's going to vibrate back to you. That's what's going to reflect back to you. You know, if you curse people out, that's what's going to happen. There's a lot of people who are very manipulative. And when people fight against that, they, they can't handle it, you know? You want to say that? No, no, I'm just reflecting on that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I seen your little fingers. So I was no, like, oh. I was just thinking. I was, I was just thinking. Oh, no, you do that. No, that's true, though. Um, let me see if I miss anything. Seth is saying they just don't want to be there, right? Let's see, true. I'm a Pisces. <laughs> Infinity, Pisces, love. We will, we will, we will be going live more. Um, we love having these conversations with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and anybody can always hit us up in the DMs if you ever want to talk. Like that's just our life's purpose. We just like love sharing. We help, we love growing together, um, and just being of service in any ways that we can. You know, um, if I see in reflection. Oh, you guys made me so happy getting your family and heart sharp. <laughs> <laughs> we just channeling in. We just tapping in. You know, all this information is available to all of us if we just allow ourselves to be open to it. You know, that's why we have to be wary of anybody that's like, this, you know, this is my teachings or this is my knowledge and yeah. it's, or it's only for the select. It's only for the select that choose to open themselves up to it. You know, mm-hmm. it's not that anybody, because that's not how the universe works. The universe doesn't cut people off. You know, like mm-hmm. oh, I, this doesn't have favorites. It's just t- it just whatever you allow yourself to be open with, that's what's going to be channeled into you. You mm-hmm. know, and so, and that just takes being able to just be open 
and trusting in, in, in the will of the way, you know. Does that answer your question, though, Javon, about arguments? Or if anybody else has any questions? Infinity, if we're not friends already, let's, let's be friends. <laughs> Hit me up, Pisces, my Piscean reflection. <laughs> what did I miss? Did I miss something? Um, I don't think so. I was just thinking to myself that I feel my heart is closed. A closed flower right now. Oh my goodness. Yes, when you brought up that, I just love watching the videos of the flowers bloom. I mean, my goodness. Did she hear that? Yeah, she popped okay. that. Yeah, yeah. That's so true what you just said about people who can't take that as well. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And even just like talking about that, how how I brought up before, like when we experience a type of trauma, we shut our brain shuts down and we go into survival mode. When we go into that survival mode, there is a personality that gets created mm -hmm. that learns to cope with what's happening. Mm -hmm. And so that false self becomes like a whole new personality within you that's operating through this same trauma. So mm -hmm. if, if, if it was, you were traumatized by arguments or yelling or any type of things like a control power dynamics, in your life you start operating out of that false self at any time somebody comes comes near you that triggers any part of that false self that false self gets activated and just starts to argue and yell and curse and become hurtful you know you start and they start looking like it's a whole different person when you're looking at them you know when you start seeing like seeing through the spiritual eyes you come clairvoyant you start to see that they're not even themselves anymore that this false self has taken over because they've been triggered mm -hmm. and so when we start to you know start to do self-reflection work we start realizing oh this this personality was created and it's a false self and it has to be now integrated or mm -hmm. dissolved in order for you to move forward you mm -hmm. know and the way a way that you can go about doing that is write down each of your personalities that you got. So what I mean by that is everybody has somebody that's uh, you got an entity in you that's that's highly critical, just does nothing but criticizes people. You know what I'm saying? If you write that down, the critical critical me or critical whatever your name is, and then right next to it, write something like my I, because that's actually a deity. You know what I'm saying? But it's just not being able to perfectly manifest itself. So if you have the uh, if you criticize people too much and you're too judgmental, basically that's saying that you are imbalanced. But you can still flip that and become the judge. You can still become the person who has spiritual discernment. But it's very important to write this stuff down so that you know, okay, when I'm criticizing this this sub this sub personality is manifesting itself. I know that this sub personality is really my op, but the way it's coming through, I'm overly criticizing people. You know what I'm saying? So to write down these sub personalities and really get to know them is is a high degree of uh, spiritual work because what it does is it's actually you going into yourself, learning who you are, right? Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is that we all have all of these different eyes in our body, right? Or in our mind, but there's one superior eye. There's only one queen for the kingdom. Queendom. There's only one king in your kingdom. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like you got that superior eye in there but there are all these other smaller eyes, you know what I'm saying, that have different passions and desires and needs that need to be met that isn't actually real, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's important to understand that, um, you know, within, within your mind on the daily, there's a battle. There's a huge battle going on between what is actually you and what is pretending to be you, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So even in arguments, even in situations when you're dealing with people, it's highly important to understand what is speaking inside of that person. Because you're talking to Joe, but Joe got 50 <laughs> different sub-personalities in his ass. And when his sub-personality of the con artist comes out and you just want to slay that shit, <laughs> you got to realize that you're, you're, maybe your inner con artist, I'm just using that just as an example, is trying to bump heads with him. You know what I'm saying? But if it's the real self, the real self isn't going to speak. Or the real self is going to say the truth in a way that's not going to bring about harm to Joe so that he can react that harm to you. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's very important to know what is speaking through you and what is speaking through somebody so that you can know how to address it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
You might say, do you have any advice for someone who is trying to transition from looking for love to manifesting, being more loving of self and self-care? Mm. Okay, so I think one of the one of the major things that you can do, like, all right, so it's what am I trying to say? All right, so like having like you know like doing even doing like the chakra work and stuff like that, that's important, right? Especially what you said. But the most important part is to really sit down and have some space and quiet solitude. So if you're in a transitional space, you're already in a gap. You're already in a space. You're already in a pause. And what I mean by that is you're in a point where you can see one direction you can go and another direction you can go. But what I would say to that is to actually have true clarity and true vision of, uh, of a move or a decision that you need to make. Um, you need to sit with yourself and have some silent time in the dark, right? Preferably when you wake up and right before you go to sleep, okay? And this is important because just darkness alone, so this I'm, this is the actual technique. You're gonna sit in a pitch black room or you know get a tent and put a sheet over it and make it pitch black. The purpose is it for to have utter darkness and sheer darkness. And this develops basically your, your power of clarity and perception, you know what I'm saying? So the point with this is that your fasting of the physical body, right, is one thing. But when you detox your mental, and you build your mind, we use darkness for that. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because even the psyche is still a system of the body. And so all, like all systems of the body, all we need to do is give it a certain amount of space and rest. And literally things will work itself out. You know what I'm saying? If you go in there with the intention to actually heal your psyche or move to a direction of self-love and self-care, the things will actually take care of itself in its own fashion because what we got to realize is that the psyche is still nature it's still vested with uh, infinite intelligence we just got to tap into it so what i would say is contemplate on where it is that you want to be and take those images into a darkness meditation with you and all that's saying is basically go into a pitch black room make your room dark as you can and sit in that joint for you know uh, well, I don't know if it's comfortable for everybody, but I'm gonna say anywhere from 15 minutes every day, every morning, every night to about an hour and a half and sit. And all you're doing is just doing some deep breathing and you're just looking at whatever it is that direction that you wanna be in, whatever that future vision of yourself is, whatever that divine image of yourself is. You're breathing that in and then you're breathing that out. And I kid you not, it is literally that easy because the psyche it's not like you have to have all of these tools to get through all of this stuff the thing is is you have to just create space because the body is just the same as the psyche in fact your mind is your your body objectified you know what i'm saying so the same way we heal it is the same way we heal the mind you know um and just adding to that just a little bit from transitioning from uh, looking for love to, you said manifesting love for yourself, or? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just to do things that make you feel loved or mm -hmm. surrounded by love. Like, for example, <laughs> this beautiful rose quartz <laughs> is a crystal of love. <laughs> and okay yeah and whenever i'm in contact with it or whenever i see it i automatically just feel or think love and so whenever I, when i was going through the space of trying to establish more love for myself i carried it with me every day i slept with it i contemplated on it and this crystal does help you to um tap into self-love as well as clear your debris from any non-toxic kind of love oh y'all yeah, see that yeah, yes, it's on. <laughs> yes. Um, and so I also did things like just, you know, you can write down things that you love about yourself and do it in a way that is not making you be, become boastful, but just authentically looking at yourself, like how heaven would see you. And that helps to build your love for yourself. And you can also do things like, um, 
any kind of self-care things that you like to do that make you feel good about who you are those those will help helpful as well um and another thing that i had to do was i deal with my trauma and i that's why i always bring it up because i don't feel like i really tapped into love for myself until i dealt with my trauma um and something that was like really um crucial for me was picking up the sacred woman book so if you're a woman and you don't have queen of fluids sacred woman book you need to have it um because i uh <laughs> got to have you back um i the first thing that she has in there is womb work and when i did that womb work and cleared all the debris because as a as a um as a woman we take our man energy when we have sex inside of our womb and man their their penis is like a wand or like an antenna and so it picks up on frequencies so which is why we're, we're both retaining energy or retaining information or retaining um vibrations from the people that we sleep with just in different ways which is why like if you've ever been in a relationship with a guy and he's cheated on you you like almost automatically know because the magnetism on him is different it's no longer your magnetism it's somebody else's magnetism and you just intuitively know it whether they lie to you about it whether you want to realize whether you want to acknowledge it or not you intuitively know it because you're picking up on the difference of magnetism and so that's how you know men pick up on women's magnetism when they sleep with them and women inside our womb we hold their information so when we're doing womb work we're clearing out what's on inside of our womb we're clearing out any uh mental faculties of other men that are no are not undeserving and um destructive to our lives and when we do that we start to take back our throne which is you know our womb and it allows us to be able to tap into self-love and men can do that as well so they're doing some penile uh cleansing whether it's through herbs whether it's through how you're eating whether it's through clearing your magnetism you can use like um tourmalines um crystals if you were looking for a crystal for that to, to, to put around your penis, to clear the energy, clear the magnetism that's sticking to you, especially if you've dealt with women that have been um, very controlling or very greedy or very taking of you, or very jealous or envious or just different things like that. Whatever type of energy they brought into your life that may have been um, destructive towards you that you're still carrying with you, you can do that um, penis cleansing as well as as women can do their uh, womb cleaning. And that allows you to, to be more open to self-love. And once you start removing people from you, you stop feeling that, uh, like you're missing something, I need that back, I need something, I need something. And you, you, all that energy starts to channel back inside. And so you, you, you give yourself way more self um, attention. You give yourself more attention and more adoration. And by doing that, you stop looking for stuff outside of yourself and you become one with yourself and uh basically hold on one second so tired this love had to go I'm about to get ready to go um work so after i answer all this i'm gonna go to because i gotta get the children but once you start doing those type of things you start manifesting love naturally because you change yourself you change your vibration your environment starts to change. And so you start to attract what it is that you need in your life. And you stop wanting or looking for it um, in this overly aggressive way, and in a way that makes you feel that you're less than. So those are some ways that you could transition that I wanted to add to what he said. Um, why? Oh, you have a rock? <laughs> you have this rose quartz too? <laughs> That's awesome. Um, God is embracing the trauma is true self love. Yes. Second woman was there for me too. Wow, yes. I lost my first child. Um he he died in transition after birth, shortly after birth. And that's why Second Woman was so it was everything for me because it helped me to just to just deal with all the trauma in my womb. It really did. And now I can be able to, you know, move through life with way more love and way more joy. When watching the video you spoke about throughout watching it, wherever I feel energy deeply is the areas I should address. Yes. Please, goddess, let them know. 
All right. Um, I appreciate everybody for joining us today. Um, we got to go take care of our responsibilities now, our babies and work and stuff like that. Um, but we will, of course, as always, come back with some more videos for y'all. Let us know if there's anything y'all want to see us talk about. If you you need somebody to talk to or work things through, by 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 school, I, I'm a counselor. I'm a therapist, which is why I like to bring up a lot of stuff about healing and dealing with stuff like that. So I integrate my spiritual practices with my therapy. Um, but yeah, so if there's anybody out there that wants to talk, my DM is always open. Cream's DM is always open. And we're just here for y'all. We're here for each other. And I love sharing with you guys and learning from you guys as well. So y'all have a peaceful and loving day and walking through this life with your heart chakra balanced and filled with the love that you deserve. All right? Bless on bless. Sending you guys some love and light. Peace.